This is our state's last, our last outstanding liability, and it will be gone by 2036. Let me stress the importance of this. When I was Senate Finance Chair, we set the Teachers Retirement Program on a solvency plan. That was a 40-year plan. OPEB will be solved in half that time. With my signature, the West Virginia taxpayers will begin to save. Rated agencies will look more favorably on West Virginia as we institute a plan to pay off OPEB. That means lower interest rates on projects that need financing, and that is true savings. The immediate savings will be in our schools because with my signature, we will be relieving our county school boards of $485 million in future OPEB liability payments. Today, the counties who have saved money for the payment towards this debt can now utilize $20 million that they have saved for their local needs. As a former school teacher, I personally know that what this means for the teachers, but most important, what it will mean for the students of the Mountain State. Last year, I can frankly say that one of my greatest disappointments during last year's session was our inability to finalize this OPEB issue at the conclusion of the session in, in those last few days, uh, and as well uh, the Marcellus uh, uh, legislation. Uh, so I guess while those may have been some of the greatest disappointments of last session, those all turned around fairly quickly though this year because we have passed already in the, both in December and again now in, in the, this session legislation to deal comprehensively with both the Marcellus and as well as the Cracker uh, incentive and particularly the OPEB. Uh, that is huge in my books because it does in fact take, put West Virginia number one as you mentioned, the first state in the union that addressed it. We're probably the first one in the competing states for the cracker that has a comprehensive Marcellus Shale regulatory framework as well. So those are two few, a couple of things that I know that this legislature, our colleagues in the House and the Senate, have worked upon to send signals throughout the rest of the country that we're not only ahead of the curve, we're, we're leading the charge. We're getting things done. We are the first state, as the governor has said, to address this in a comprehensive manner. This is no easy task particularly for a state like West Virginia where we have so many different issues and needs ahead of us. By putting this behind us, by addressing it in full, in a comprehensive manner, we are positioned to do some heavy lifting in the future. Whether that is uh, infrastructure and roads and bridges, salaries, payrolls, benefits, health care, these issues we know are there. We know they're expensive. We know we have to address them. Now, for the first time, we have really eliminated the major financial sins of the past. And because of that, because of the work of Governor Tomlin, because of the work of the Senate, because of the work in the House, we are here today because of the work of the stakeholders, and perhaps in many ways, most importantly, the stakeholders, we are here with the success that I think we can all stand up and be proud of what we have accomplished as a group, as a state, and hopefully uh, we will see the benefits in the years ahead as we are better able to address the, uh, the issues and opportunities that face us. When you start looking back, and you start looking back in, in those, you know, I've been here 20 years, all the things that we've handled and we've accomplished, and to get to the last unfunded liability is pretty amazing. And it's nice to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago when I came here, uh, I, like Senator Plymouth, didn't think we would ever be at this point. But this is truly a historic day for West Virginia, and I, I'm proud to be a part of it. And I certainly want to applaud the efforts of the governor and the leadership of the governor.